Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Microsoft in part one of the series. Um, so there'll be two videos. The first one, we're just going to talk about Microsoft and some of their key kind of growth opportunities. And then the second video, we'll actually pull together a DCF on them and um, see what kind of evaluation we can get based off some of our assumptions. So I'm going to guess most of you are familiar with Microsoft. If you're not, they're just a large tech conglomerate. Um, they're not included in the common acronym FANG, but a lot of people think they should be. Um, so it should be expanded to include them, but uh, they operate in three main segments, productivity and business processes, intelligent cloud, and then a more personal computing space. Each of these is about a 46 to $48 billion segment. Um, current stock price as of 326 was $236 with a market cap of 1.8 trillion roughly. This makes them about the third largest company in the world, I think. I think Amazon and Apple are both ahead of them. I think Google is close, but I'm not entirely sure. Haven't looked at their market cap in a while. They're, um, unlike most tech companies, are actually headquartered out of Washington. CEO is Satya Nadella. He's a, I believe he's a long, long time employee of the company and um, kind of grew up in the cloud business and really helped shape that for them. CFO is Amy Hood. Just a couple quick numbers to hit on here is the revenue and net income. Um, so you can see going from 110 to 143 billion and then 16 billion to 44 billion. So they've done a great job of increasing the revenue while also just increasing the profitability of the company over the last few years. A um, few things to talk about in the recent news, and this is kind of what actually sparked me to, to dig into Microsoft and look a little bit more into the company. Um, they're rumored to be in advanced acquisition talks with Discord for $10 billion, which I think is an interesting opportunity. Uh, there's a lot of different opinions out there about why they'd want to acquire this. Some are saying just to get Discord on Azure and to show that they can migrate a massive company over to Azure, which could be a good selling point for other large corporations that aren't currently on the, on the Azure cloud. Um, some things as far as just they've missed the bandwagon on like the YouTubes and the Twitches of the world. Is this kind of the next platform that is really going to be integrated into the gaming and online community culture. Um, so a lot of interesting reasons there. And $10 billion for a company of this size is, is not super material, but Discord is kind of a household name in the tech space. So um, it's getting a lot of press. A um, Couple other interesting things. They announced a partnership with Volkswagen. Um, I believe they've actually had a partnership with Volkswagen for a while now to, to help uh, deliver automated driving, but they've just kind of expanded the scope of it. Um, so there's like this Volkswagen cloud which is based off Azure, but it's what allows the self-driving system that Volkswagen is developing to um, kind of take the data in real time, perform the calculations and make the decisions um, for the vehicle. Um, they did recently release second quarter results. Um, cloud has once again been strong. Um, they hired a new um, individual to hire their business development, uh, Christopher Young. He was the CEO of McAfee and sits on a couple um, pretty big boards of American Express and Snap. Um, and then something just kind of interesting about the shifting business of Microsoft. Um, 2020, they actually announced the closing of their 83 retail stores. I think it was back around, I want to say 2011 or 2010, they started opening up retail stores to kind of compete against Apple um, is what it felt like. It had a very similar genius bar, but the difference was they didn't really have a lot of products of their own they sold. You could go play the Xbox there. You could mess around with these giant surface table things they had, um, but it was kind of like their retail version. And then they sold kind of surfaces and a few other things. And then they just sold a lot of miscellaneous computers like HP and Dells and things like that. So um, they, they announced the closing of these stores and then they actually announced a partnership with GameStop um, just a couple of months later. And I think, you know, this is really, the announcement was mostly around GameStop switching to using Office 365 and Surfaces and everything like that for the employees. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw um, Microsoft products start to show up now in the, the GameStop retail footprint. So if there were Surfaces or things like that being sold. So I think they kind of realized they didn't need a full-blown retail um, channel to sell their you know, yeah, they make the Surface and they make the Xbox, but kind of outside of that, there's not too many consumer related products that they create and people aren't really, you know what I mean? And Best Buy, so all these other places sell, you know, these products where you can go test them out and see them. Um, so the Apple model didn't quite work for them. Um, just a couple things to think about when we build out the DCF in the next video, some risks and opportunities. So obviously productivity applications, this has actually been growing incredibly well for them, which I was kind of surprised. So the commercial Office 365 um, grew 24% in 2020. 
and the consumer grew 24%. And to me, I was thinking, you know, consumers are going to be switching to the Google services that are free, um, Google Sheets and things like that. But I think it's partially also when you buy a new PC, which I think is most users, um, you know, they or, you know, obviously not most users, but most individuals, when they're going to buy a, a home computer, they're not building like a custom gaming rig or something. They're just buying a pre-built machine. And if it's a PC based machine, right, it's going to come with like a Office 365 trial or something on it. And then from there, they're just going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll keep doing this. It's $7 a month. Or I think there's a discount if you do the full year, $60 a year. So I guess I can understand why consumers are staying on this. And they've done a really good job switching Office from being a one-time purchase to a, you know, a software as a service. Um, so, but I think something, you know, Google has, I would say, you know, I use Office 365 at work and trying to edit Excel sheets in a web browser is a nightmare. But if you pull up Google Sheets, like 10 people in there at once, all editing, nothing goes wrong. Um, so I think Google has a superior collaboration product, but I think Microsoft still has kind of their legacy market share. And then just consumers use it, you know, most corporations are going to use the Microsoft suite. So I think they, you know, at home, I actually still pay for Excel and Office and all of that, even though I know Sheets pretty well and it works just as well. But I'm just so familiar with Excel from work that I've carried over in my home life. But I think, you know, that's a that's a big risk, but also an opportunity in that space. And if Google were to make heavy investments there and really push for it, you could see some di disruption there. Um, another thing to call out, while this isn't necessarily very big on their revenue, Right, they're doing 140 billion in revenue. LinkedIn made up about six and a half billion of that, so you know less than five percent of their revenue. Um, but it's you know it's one of the I would say major social media platforms out there, um, and just continuing to monetize that and doing it the correct way and keeping the user base and keeping people engaged and you know, now they have all these job offerings and job services on there as well. So you're kind of poking into the Indeed and the monster space. I think LinkedIn could be a very valuable asset in the future. And, you know, I could see that becoming a, a 10 or $20 billion revenue um, item and not, not too far down if they can kind of strategically monetize it um, through ad revenue and, you know, the paid premium ways, things like that. Um, next, really Azure. Uh, Microsoft, their growth really does come from the cloud. Um, their cloud had a 56% growth in 2020. It's already the second largest cloud provider behind only AWS. There's some interesting kind of commentary out there about how some retail customers and things won't use AWS because Amazon directly competes against them. I don't know how true that is, but Microsoft doesn't necessarily compete in kind of the mass retail space. So that does give them kind of a leg up for some of those larger customers. Um, but I think Azure is going to be kind of the key to um, Microsoft's future. And then the last thing is just general competition. Every product line that Microsoft operates in today has intense competition. Um, it's not the Microsoft of the 90s anymore where PCs ruled the world and you had to have Microsoft OS. Like that's still true, but that's not the bread and butter of Microsoft anymore that makes them money. Um, today it's, it's cloud, it's Xbox, it's, you know, it's productivity cert, like suites, things like that. And there's just a lot more competition in all those spaces from tech companies than Microsoft of the nineties. So just, you know, they have to continue to, um, kind of go with the times and improve and modernize. And I think, you know, productivity is a great, great example here of how they led that very well. They turned a legacy product that was a $150 one-time purchase and you'd buy it and then your home PC sat there for probably seven or eight years if you were kind of the average consumer and, you know, and then you'd refresh it in eight years. And when you bought a new computer, you'd pay the $150 again for office um, today, right? Like that computer, you're going to pay 70 bucks a year for all eight years. So now you're going to get $500 out of that consumer instead of 150. So I think they've done a great job there and it's just, they need to, to continue to adapt and change. And I think, um, PC gaming is also a big spot and, you know, if they can acquire discord, that could be huge for them and they can really move into that space and kind of bring it together with their Xbox platform. And I think you could see a lot of success there. Um, so th like I said, this is part one, we'll go ahead and jump over now. Um, part two, go ahead. Um, there should be a little pop up here to click on that and it'll take you to the second video and we'll, we'll pull together a DCF and kind of look at the current valuation of Microsoft and, um, 
you know, discuss if we think it's over or undervalued or um, some of our assumptions. And we'd love to hear your thoughts uh, after that video um, if you have any other, you know, kind of counter assumptions. And I think, you know, dialogue is a good thing to, to bring up when you're doing things like this. So thanks for tuning in and we'll jump on over to that.